Subject matter I'm going to use is related to the feet and I'm going to use the artist model 1 Gris. This is my layout and how I work my workspace. I always take notes. This is 1 Gris and here's a Spanish artist. I'm going to do this sort of colours that I um, saw in 1 Gris work. There was um, blue, green and purple. I'm going to use a little bit of scumbling and um, just trialling out the paint using a little bit of blending techniques, light and dark blending techniques. So the green has a little bit of black in it, that's yellow, blue and a touch of black and now I'm adding a bit of white, it makes it quite a moss green. I make sure to write down the type of technique that it is. There's scumbling, there's smooth, and there's broken brush techniques that I'm going to trial. The scumbling um, you use circular motion for. I'm going to start with the dark purple. It makes a really good shadow type tone. Scumbling by going around in circles and then I add in my white to blend it. And see it gives quite a nice shadow and a nice form. My techniques. The next technique I'm going to use is smooth and basically I am using the brush in the direction of the bristles and I start by blocking and then feathering, making sure the tone is laid down. And then I start from the other side with the white and then I touch the darker tone and then I drag it through. And I'm doing the same thing again and it ends up blending nicely. This is me technique, working out my techniques. What would I like to use in my painting later and also trying to look at one gris and how his work looks. The next one I'm going to do is a broken brush technique and the broken brush basically means you put down the tones in almost like dot work so you can still see the broken brush stroke. Always make sure that my brush is clean and I wipe off any extra paint so I don't have too much and you'll see me doing that later with a cloth. So I'm adding a little bit of white and you can definitely see the distinct brush strokes. It's really important to be able to see the brush strokes in the broken brush technique. Now one Gris I noted was a cubist artist and I happen to know that he used analytical cubism and there's a, a couple of other types of cubism and you know, for example synthetic cubism which was a lot flatter. This one he uses shadows in his work so that's why I'm interested in it. So it still looks a little bit three-dimensional but it is made into shapes so any flat plane on a surface is made into either a triangle or a circle or something like that as though it's been made up of flat triangles or flat squares or cubes. So synthetic cubism, I'm not going to do that one. It's analytical cubism. I think I'll use a couple of these techniques, the ones I'm going to use I've ticked. And then I get my card and then I stick it down into my visual diary and you can see my layout now. I'm doing some thumbnail sketches, these are four of them, I'm going to fill them in later. Then these two are A5 and I'm going to paint one of those. I'm going to use this image from my laptop to do it. And this is what it finally looks like. I double check that the one Gris artist model is um, what I like and I'm just looking at the shadow effects there and just checking out some more of his work. 
So now I'm going to start painting my Juan Gris style shoe. I'm going to do two very similar ones um, with a slightly different colour scheme and I'm going to cut them up and then further them to make them more cubist. So this is the result of what I've actually painted. These are the four original images that are similar in subject matter. And now this is me painting in the darker areas first. The shadows are really important. If you look really closely, the shadows are what makes it look realistic. So the light is coming in from the window. And by the time I finish just this video, you'll only see the first layer. And over the next couple of videos, you'll see how I develop this further to make it look like it's more three-dimensional and more cubist as I go. So I'm still blacking in some of the areas and I'm using dark tones. But I'm using my colours, purple and green, to make them look like dark tones. Let's consider where we started. So I started with my sketch. I'm checking that I'm using the right techniques. I'm always looking at my photograph that I'm painting and I'm always looking at the artist model and their techniques that I know that that artist uses. That means that I'm always developing, developing my work. I'm just making things up. It's not very good to just make things up as you go. It's really good to follow an artist's study. So here is a quick version of how you develop it further always wiping down my brush always wiping down my surfaces to make sure they're clean behind because as soon as the paint dries there's no way you can get it off quickly and easily so keep your surfaces lovely and tidy keep your paint palette nice and clean make sure that you're using light and dark tones and you're pushing and pulling on every single layer I make sure that I fill in the whole ground, especially in the background, and I'll be overworking that about two or three more layers at least in the background, and the top layer, the shoes, will definitely be six layers. So this video is the first layer, and that's just finished now. Your turn now, use an artist model, lay out your visual diary page, do your painting techniques, label things and make sure you do a page like this.